What is going on guys, Grave here today, I'd like to talk about the best settings for Battlefield 2042 for console players. Now some of this may work as well if you're on PC and you're using a controller, but I know a lot of console players out there feel like the controls feel a bit heavy, a bit clunky compared to other shooters. And now of course if you play other games as well, it's always going to feel different from game to game. Of course I'm a big Battlefield fan, a big Call of Duty fan, I've played both of the games since they've been made, so I've played all the CODs, all the Battlefields, so every year I'm playing both just kind of back and forth all day throughout the week. Uh, recording and do, doing all that kind of stuff. So right now I'm bouncing, of course, between Vanguard and Battlefield 2042. And yes, it feels odd just bouncing back and forth. But Battlefield this year feels a bit different. And one reason is a lot of people are saying the aim assist is not working correctly, kind of like it was in the beta, even though we have aim assist settings there. And you can tell there's not a lot of slowdown. If you're in a close range gunfight, to me, the aim is not really slowing down whatsoever. So I adjusted my aim to feel a little bit more natural. It's going to be a bit slower than some of you may be used to. Uh, but this, in my opinion, feels the most smooth or the, probably the best or the smoothest experience that I've had so far with the Battlefield 2042. And I may tweak these in the future, so I'll make another video for that. But let's go ahead and hop right into it. First of all, all the stuff in the general setting, of course, is going to be preference. If you play vertical or not, you know. Uh, if you want it inverted, whatever the case may be. Of course, I have everything here. Off camera shake needs to be turned down low as possible, so down to 50. Crossplay is on. Hint for controls, I have left on. Uh, share usage data, I have this off. Uh, show player created content, I have this left on. And allow followers, I have this off. This will actually allow players to follow you from game to game. Personally, I don't like it, but that's just kind of up to you. Now, when it comes to the display, my field of view is set on 64. I know a lot of you are going to say that sounds really low. But keep in mind, this is not a vertical FOV. So if you're used to playing Apex, Fortnite, Call of Duty, you know, my COD uh, FOV, other games, Apex is around 95 to 97. That course is a horizontal FOV. This game is not a horizontal traditional FOV, so it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So what you're going to need to do is find a converter for horizontal compared to vertical FOV, because that's what Battlefield 2042 is using. So if you're using, for example, uh, like I do, around a 95 to 97 horizontal FOV in most games on console, you're going to use a 64 FOV on Battlefield 2042. I know that sounds very low, but that is one reason when a lot of people ask, why does it only go to 105? Why is it not up to, you know, 120 or more? That is the reason, because Battlefield 2042 is a vertical FOV, not a horizontal so just to give you some more examples, just for you guys, in case you're kind of curious, like I said, if you run a 95 horizontal FOV, that's going to be around a 64 on a Battlefield. If you like to run around a 100 FOV uh, in Call of Duty or Apex, that's going to be a 68. If you're used to running a 105 FOV, that's going to be a 73 in Battlefield. And if you're used to running a 120 FOV, that's going to be around a 89 in Battlefield. So definitely look at this. Uh, look up a converter from horizontal to vertical FOV so you can get your uh, field of view just right. Because in my opinion, if you go too high in this game, like I did when I first you know, started playing the game a few days ago, it felt very weird. It made my controls feel even worse. And that is one of the reasons, because that FOV is vertical in Battlefield 2042, not horizontal. Now, when it comes to vehicle field of view, I have this set all the way up. Now, of course, that is personal preference. This is going to be around 120 uh, FOV normally. So I just like to be able to see, you know, out of those vehicles easily. Uh, ADS field of view, I have this set to on. When this is on, it's going to magnify the weapon sight will be relative to what your FOV is you're using in game. Personally, I like it on. You may like it off. You can try both. But for me, like I said, I like it on. Brightness, I did not touch this. 50 feels right. I went a little bit lower, a little bit higher. I don't think it needs to be adjusted, honestly. I do play on a monitor, a gaming monitor. So what you play on may be a little bit darker, or a little bit brighter, just depending on whatever the case may be. You might need to adjust that a little bit, but for me personally, 50 feels just right. Motion blur you want off and all of this stuff you want off. Uh, some of this stuff looks nice if you're playing like a campaign. Of course, we don't have a campaign in Battlefield 2042. So a lot of this stuff just kind of uh, messes up the way the game looks at a distance and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I prefer to turn all of this off. When it comes to the HUD, uh, everything here, I have, of course, have the HUD shown to be on. HUD motion I have off. You can turn this off or on. The HUD will kind of move the way you move. Personally, I do not like that. Camera shake amounts here once again. That is to 50. Uh, soldier compass, always on. Soldier uh, vehicle seat. Uh, toggle the vis uh, visibility for each seat in the HUD. I have that on. Colorblind settings. I have these to custom. Not really colorblind myself personally. I know some of you may be, so you might want to check these out just in case. But I like to have these settings to be able to see things in game a little bit easier for myself. Just because the usual traditional red for like enemy colors never shows up really well, well to me. It's always kind of 
not really dull looking, but I like having something a little bit brighter so I can see name tags easier. So I set this to pink. My custom friendly color is blue. Of course, you know your custom squad color is that bright green. And then the neutral color I left to just white. Kill log I have on, and I have it set to nearby. Now you can choose to choose, uh, you know, to swap this to all team, squad, whatever the case may be, self. I like nearby. There's so many players in the game. Uh, personally, uh, if you have all on, you're seeing so much in that kill feed. So I like to know what's going on close to where I'm at in game so I kind of have an idea of what's happening and kind of what I'm going to get into in a particular area. When it comes to the crosshair, I have uh, this, of course, set to 100. The projection I have set to off. The crosshair thickness is default. And, of course, you can change your crosshair color. It shows an example to the right of in shadows, you know, brights, whatever the case may be. I set mine to green. Uh, green, purple, pink is probably the three best in my opinion. If you can see those colors well, uh, those are probably the, some of the best in the game. I've always used those kind of colors since we've had that option in Battlefield. Uh, the hit indicator set up to, of course, to 100. The hit color, now I did change these. So when I get an enemy hit, when I'm hitting an enemy, it's going to flash blue. Uh, damage base shape is on. A headshot color is going to be red. And whenever I get a kill, it's going to flash that bright green. So I know an enemy's dead and I can move on to the next enemy. Armor broken hit indicator is on. And of course, armor hit indicator. I have this to kind of a light blue color. You could change this to whatever you wanted. But you will see that if an enemy has uh, body armor on or if they're using some of the characters that actually spawn in with body armor in the game, Irish, for an example, Irish does have more armor than other enemies or other players, excuse me. But you can also use those body plates uh, on each individual character if you prefer. And you can put even more armor on Irish. I'm going to make a video separate about that and talk about that here in the next few days. But you're going to see that flash up when you start hitting that enemy. You're going to see that armor come up before you see the enemy start taking damage. Now, when it comes to the minimap, I have uh, this set to 100. Of course, rotation is on. My distance view on foot is 150. Uh, ground vehicles is 150. And air vehicles is 220. Personally, I turn these up. They are a lot lower on the, by default. I like to see more of the minimap coverage uh, just for me. You may not like that, but that is what I have mine set to. When it comes to sound, I have my master volume to 95, music to zero. You may like music. If you do, I'd say turn it to about 20. Sound effects, of course, is going to be footsteps, gunfire, and all that good stuff. That's 100. And the in-game announcer, I've turned down to 50 because it's very loud just overall to me. Sound configuration. Now, if you have this set to 3D sound in your audio mix, this will be grayed out. You cannot touch it. If you're not using 3D sound, you can turn it to surround. What I use, of course, I have Astro, so I use my Astro Equalizer. Even though I don't have my mix amp right now because I'm on PS5, so I, just, I don't have the, uh, you know, the optical splitter, I just use my Astro's plug straight into my controller, but the Astro Equalizer still sounds very good in my opinion. Right now, the only hit indicator option we have is for Battlefield 2042, so I left it with that. And the radio music, you can, have, uh, you can choose to have that on or off, so you can turn the radio on in vehicles. When it comes to subtitles, of course, that is on and subtitle text is normal. Uh, controller, so we're going to start getting into a little bit more advanced things here. Now, I have mine set to custom. You can set these to default. I would recommend if you're used to shooting, uh, you know, like R R2 or L2, you know, whatever you want to uh, call your left, right triggers in the back. You might want to go with just a default and then maybe an alternate button setting. That way you can swap your knife and, you know, your crouch between R3 and circle or you know r3 and whatever that is on xbox i spent so long since i played on xbox i can't remember i think that's the b button but anyway uh, you can swap those so you can have your melee and your you know your ability to go prone and things on a, a different button set but personally i like to shoot with l1 r1 so that's why i have custom setups here and we'll talk about that here in just a set uh just a second also in my opinion this helps out with that really good uh movement now that i've trying to kind of got the hang of in game it feels a lot more smooth than it was clunky uh, previously. Of course, this is all set to default. Depends on what you like to drive with. If you like to drive with the sticks or the back buttons, it's going to kind of be up to you. Of course, pilot controls is default. My pilot control buttons are alternate. Uh, gunner controls are default. Gunner buttons are alternate. When it comes to global settings, inverted look for soldier. I don't know why we get some of this stuff over again, but we do. I have that off. Of course, I play with the controller vibration off. I don't like anything that messes with my shot. Vibration always kind of throws me off, so I always turn it off in every game. Uh, on foot sensitivity. Now 30 may sound really low, but you'll see why here in just a second. You can turn this up more. Personally, I like it set to 30. This feels a lot smoother. Uh, inverted look for soldier, of course, that's off once again. Field of view, we've already talked about at 64. ADS field of view, we've talked about. Soldier aim assist. Now here's where we're getting into that aim assist that a lot of people say it does not work. And you can tell it is not sticky whatsoever up close. They may adjust this in the future. 
I was hoping the game's sensitivity and things would feel more like Battlefield 3 and 4. Unfortunately, that's not the case. It feels a little bit more like Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, but not even as slow and sticky as it was there. It seems like this is not really even working. But personally, I feel like it is better if I turned it down from the default 100. I would recommend trying this between 90 and 95. I would not go higher than 95, but try it between 90 and 95 and see if it works for you. Soldier Aim Assist Zoom Snap. I'm not a big fan of this. I usually don't like this turned on. But right now, the way the Aim Assist is working in-game, I turned mine down to 80, and it feels normal to me. It feels like what a normal shooter on console, kind of how it interacts or how it acts with a game, you know, when you're going from target to target. If I turn it all the way off, it feels a bit weird. If I leave it all the way up, it feels very weird. So 80 was about the sweet spot for me. Soldier Sprint, I have to hold. Double tap uh, forward to sprint, I have off. Now you can turn this to that kind of auto sprint. I was thinking it would be more like Call of Duty where you just pushed up on the stick and it'll sprint, but you still have to double tap it uh, to auto sprint. So personally for me, this is the best way because I only have to click it once and then it just runs. I don't have to keep holding it. Of course, my sprint button is L3. Uh, sprint to vault over is off. Always use traversal sprint is off. You can turn this on, so you always use that traversal sprint as soon as you uh, you know click that button, which is fine. It's however you want to do it. I, I prefer just to you know click it and then have the traversal sprint or just your normal sprint if you do not decide to click the stick. Uh, soldier uh, weapon zoom is on hold. The zoom button, of course, mine personally L1 because I use L1 and R1 to shoot. Steady scope is hold. Steady scope hold button is L3. You can change that if you prefer. I like it like this. My soldier zoom aim sensitivity now this is your aim down sight sensitivity it is set by default to 100 personally for me the way i'm running this the way i've changed my axle dead zones and things 92 is the sweet spot uh, parachute auto deploy is off air spawn uh, parachute auto deploy now this is if you just spawn in an area where you're in a parachute automatically i have that set to on quick throw grenades i have off this might be better uh, for some players you might want to have this set differently if you use the D-pad to throw, I actually changed the grenade throw button because I cannot stand it being on the D-pad. Uh, the uh, revive interaction, I have to hold. Uh, skip revive, I have to hold. And reload hence, I have on. Of course, when it comes to advanced aiming, now this is why my settings are a lot lower, but they feel a lot better. The aim left right acceleration, I have set to 8. I would recommend if you're on console and you're used to playing things like Apex, COD, Fortnite, whatever the case may be, I would recommend having this between 8, 9, or 10. Um, this says to set the value, you know, if you're like used to Battlefield 1 to go up to 100. If you're used to BF4, set it to 0. And of course, I really liked Battlefield 3 and 4's aiming. So I put it to 0 and it still feels a bit off. So personally for me, 8, 9, or 10 is going to be what I would recommend. 8 for me is the sweet spot. Vertical aim ratio and vertical zoom ratio I have set to 80. I have the uniform soldier aiming off. In the past, I liked uniform soldier aiming on battlefield. And of course, the coefficient is automatically set to 133 if you have this on. You can't adjust that. But for me, this year, I have it off because with it on, it feels really, really strange. Now, when it comes to zoom, transition, sensitivity, smoothing, I have not really adjusted these yet. This is going to be fine tune aiming sensitivity of the soldier weapon when in zoom using, you know, each magnification. Now what this does, of course, is it enables the smooth to smooth out the sensitivity transition between aiming down sight instead of instantly transitioning to the zoomed sensitivity. You could find out the ratio to adjust this between what you have, you know, here compared to what your, you know, actual sensitivity is when you're zooming in. Personally, this doesn't really bother me. You might could adjust it to make it feel a little bit better. But that's kind of what I've just, you know, I left that with the default right now. When it comes to vehicles, my vehicle aim sensitivity is 40. Uh, my inverted look for tracked vehicles is off. My course field of view is 88. All my tank gunner and things like that is set to 60. You might want to change those if you like vehicle sensitivity to be a bit faster. Uh, flying in this game is a little bit odd to me. I really enjoyed flying in the beta. A lot of people said it was too, too OP. The, the helicopters and things were too good. So they kind of have adjusted the flying setting some. I used to really like jets, helicopters, that kind of stuff in older Battlefield games. I'm turned more into a, a uh, person that likes to play on foot now in 2042 until I can get the hang of these vehicles. I may not ever get the hang of them. They feel a bit odd in my opinion. 
Of course, you can change the zoom and gunner buttons to whatever you would like to have them. I just have them set to the default L2. Even though I use R1, L1 to shoot on foot with a weapon, these don't really bother me in a vehicle to be just left to that default back trigger. Uh, inverted look for aircraft, I have that set to off. Aircraft control sensitivity is 70. Helicopter control sensitivity is on. Of course, aiming left, right, acceleration for the vehicles, I have to zero. Now, you could do this once again, like I have, you know, up there with your uh, with your soldier. Turn this to 8, 9, or 10, uh, whatever you like. Uh, vertical aim ratio is 48, and vertical zoom aim ratio is 80. I've kind of just left those alone. I hadn't really messed with them too much. Maybe one reason my flying does not feel very good. Uh, uniform vehicle aiming. Now, this may be one reason they do not feel as good to me. I have left this on. You may want to try that on off. I'm not sure what your preferences are for vehicles, but you can have that on or off. Uh, vehicle aim relative controls, I have set to off as well. Controller tuning. Controller vibration, of course, is off. My center dead zone is set to 5. My axle dead zone is 0 on my left stick and 100 for the input threshold. The same for the right stick. So left and right stick are 5, 0, 100. Now, if you have a lot of stick drift, you may need to adjust this. But when I talked about having a slower sensitivity, when I turn this axle dead zone down to zero, the game feels a lot more fluid. The aim down sight feels good. The soldier movement feel good, feels good. You may want to move that soldier movement up to pretty much you know your left-right movement. You may want to move it past 30. You may like it a little bit faster. But when I move this axle dead zone down to zero, the game feels a lot better. It feels more like a traditional, what you're used to, FPS kind of settings. Um, but of course, when it comes to your left and right buttons, of course, since I use these in the you know vehicles, I have these dead zones to 0, 100, 0, 100. If you use uh, the back triggers to shoot, you definitely want to have these down to 0 because as soon as you hit, it, hit that input button, you're not going to have any delay from firing. Uh, when it comes to accessibility, menu narration is off. Uh, convert incoming voice text is off. Of course, we already talked about the custom colorblind settings. I don't know why some of this stuff is placed in here twice. Uh, subtitles we've already talked about. Controls, soldier sprint, all this stuff we've already talked about. Like I said, it's crazy that some of this stuff is listed again. Uh, when it comes to controller mapping, uh, mapping, I'm going to show you what I use. Now, you can set this to however you want it to work. I'm used to using like a scuff or the PlayStation back button for a long time on PS4. Unfortunately, there's nothing like that for PS5 yet. I don't have a battle, be uh, battle beaver or a scuff for my PS5. So I use kind of that bumper jumper setup, like from traditional Halo, from Call of Duty. That's what I'm using right now. You can change this to kind of work for you, but I will show you what I'm using personally. Of course, you can kind of see what is here in settings, uh, you know, just kind of your uh, common things. The more important things you want to look at is your own foot settings. Of course, my jump is set to L2. My vault is set to L2, sprint L3, double sprint, of course, L3. My crouch is R3. My fire buttons R1, zooms L1, reload, square, you know, your interact, all that stuff is still square. My parachute deploy is L2. So pretty much if you're used to jumping, you know, with the X button, uh, the, I think it's the A button on the Xbox. I just changed all the stuff that's on that to the left back trigger if you like to shoot with the bumpers. Just kind of swap those out. My melee, of course, is the circle button. When it comes to grenades, uh, I still use the gadgets on the D-pad. But instead of using up on the D-pad for the grenade, I decided to change that to X. It's a lot easier in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of the grenade in general. Just overall, the way it is set up on uh, Battlefield 2042, but X feels a lot smoother than using the D-pad. You will still have to cycle um, with these. You know, If you're using one of the characters that have the se separate grenades that you can use, you still have to cycle with that X button. Toggle under barrel, of course, is down. Fire mode, of course, is down if you're ADS. Uh, steady scope, of course, is L3. Chain seat and vehicle set to X. Full map, of course, I still have set to the touchpad. I have not added any inputs to any of these. There are options to do that. They are left blank by default, but I have not messed with those at all. And so what I do to modify my weapon attachments is hit up on the D-pad now that I've swapped you know, the grenade to X, and I really like that. My comma rows and my chat, of course, are set to R2, and to cycle my primary weapon is set to triangle. Now, of course, you can adjust these for all your vehicles and things, whatever you would like. I have adjusted a few of those, but personally, I think the own foot ones are the ones I really wanted to show you guys to see exactly how I'm, you know, getting this better feeling overall when it comes to movement and aim down sights. But mainly, like I said, those controls you really want to look at are these own foot controls and these 
uh, controller tuning. I think these work the best with these right and left acceleration slope way down. This is way too high in my opinion. So definitely adjust these, try this out. You might want to tweak them, like I said, between you know what I have set and maybe a little bit higher if it feels off to you. But personally, overall, this has really, really helped, really improved the way the game feels. It does not feel clunky. It does not feel heavy. Uh, it feels more like what you would think of in Apex, Call of Duty, those kind of things. And like I said, I've played all the Battlefield games, all the Call of Duty games since they came out. And to me, this feels more like a smooth, uh, smooth transition between playing both games compared to what it did like uh, when you go into Battlefield 2042 and you leave the controllers uh, settings set to the default settings that are available in game. I don't think they even feel as good as Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 and those felt clunky to me. But right now, this is what's really working for me and hopefully it will work for you. Uh, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know if you're having issues with controller settings. One thing real quick before I forget, if you do use a site in Battlefield 2042 that has a big zoom and a red dot where you can swap and toggle back and forth, unfortunately, that is always set to default on the R3 and there's no way to change that. So the right stick, when you click it in, that's going to zoom, but change your zooms. Also going to make you squat. So as soon as you click that zoom, you're going to crouch. I hope they give us an option to change that out in button layouts, but they don't have that available right now. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. I know it was a longer video than normal, but I want to make sure everyone knew the settings I was using. So, so you'll be able to try these things out and be able to maybe have a smoother, more enjoyable experience. Like I said, if you liked the video, hit the like. If you hadn't subscribed yet, please do so. Leave me a comment with your thoughts. Check out everything down in the description, of course. Uh, the community discord, all that good stuff. Of course, the affiliates here on the channel, Amazon, Associates, Empire Jerky, the merch store. And of course, if you would like to join any of the you know things I have available for the different games I play, clans, that kind of thing, those are down there in the description. Also, hopefully they'll add something like that for us to have in Battlefield eventually, and I'll have one listed down in the description. So if anybody wants to join that kind of the community, we can do that as well. But like I said, if you want to just talk games in general, the Discord is linked down there uh, in the description. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Peace.